my name is Ted Metz. I'm a policy analyst at the uh, New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. I'm joined by my, my colleague, Nikita Vavodin, who is a senior data engineer and is also the lead for uh, the analytics team within the policy division at, at the TLC. And we're just going to do today a, a very general overview of our open data. We know that our we often get requests and also talk about the unique situation of our open data in that it's, you know, a really rich data for research and exploring the industry, but also our industry is really dependent on it for their operations. And so we'll talk a bit about that. And then Nikita will also do a really cool demonstration of, of an app that he developed and his team developed that utilizes our open data and really where we're hoping to grow with that as well. So for those of you that are uh, might not be uh, familiar with the TLC, just an overview of our agency, pretty much any time you get into a car in New York City and you're paying for that trip, we are the regulator. So uh, we celebrated our 50th anniversary last year. We regulate over 100,000 active vehicles right now and over 175,000 active drivers. Those numbers were even higher before the pandemic, and we're seeing the industry really come back as New York City reopens. So the industry, the areas of the industry that we regulate the most, we have our six vehicle classes. So those would be the iconic yellow tax taxis are green taxis that have operate similarly to yellow, but work in the uh, outer boroughs and uptown Manhattan. And then we also operate traditional FHVs. So those are liveries, local cars that you would call up for a trip. And then we also operate FHVs that are uh, that work for apps. So these are the, uh, the, our largest vehicle class in terms of how many we license. And, and then our final ones are a bit smaller. Those are the commuter vans and medical transportation. So in, in addition, we, we regulate the high volume for hire services. So that's a new license class for us. And that really encompasses our Uber and Lyfts. Those are, those are companies that make more than 10,000 trips per day. We also regulate things like technology providers. So any technologies that is within the vehicle or supports the vehicle has to come through us. A variety of industry services, so a lot of the equipment Equipment that might be in the car. And then we also, we have a very lengthy application process. And a big part of that is our driver education and those providers and all of those services are regulated by us. And these really hit on a lot of the data that we'll be uh, speaking about today. A bit of a, about our open data. We have almost 60 uh, data sets on NYC open data. Two of them have been viewed over 1 million times, which I think is pretty impressive for, for the TLC is considered a pretty small uh, agency. And hundreds of thousands of licensees really rely on the open data portals because it really provides the list of, of the vehicles and drivers that can operate. And for today, we bucketed, as we do, an, I've, we've bucketed into data that pertains to drivers, the vehicles, application process, our trip data, which is especially big for research. Uh, I would say drivers, vehicles, applications, very interesting for research, but also really serves the industry. And then finally, just other industry resources, not exact, exactly research focused, but definitely very important for people that are within the industry. So we're really our, our, our big bread and butter lists that are very frequently viewed are active drivers list. And so this includes Medallion, FHV, which encompasses both traditional FHVs and our Uber and Lyft type drivers and our green taxi drivers as well. And why these lists are so active for us is because they are really essential to our industry stakeholders as they are the list that really certifies that a driver is eligible to drive a TLC licensed vehicle on any given day. So they're updated every day. It's a huge coordination between our licensing division our enforcement division, our prosecution, to ensure that a driver that is in good standing of the agency is behind the wheel of the car that you're going to take. And so all of our bases, all of our companies that are that you know employ these drivers or the apps themselves, if a driver is independent, um, rely on these to, to make sure that it's, it's a driver in good standing. And so as a result, these are our most frequently used open data uh, portals. And they're also our most frequent open data inquiries. As you can imagine, it's over 100,000 drivers, or 175,000 drivers. So there, there can definitely be issues here and there or drivers that are reaching out about why they might not be on a list. So this is definitely our, our biggest open data. Next, also incredibly important, I would and going hand in hand with our drivers are our vehicles themselves. Similar to the drivers, we need the TLC needs to ensure that any vehicle that is out on the road is a vehicle that is within good standing of our agency, has passed all the inspections, is licensed with us. So all of our industry partners utilize these these lists for to ensure that the vehicles that they are sending out are you know TLC licensed vehicles at that moment. And so again, it's a big coordination process to ensure that between four and 7 p.m. every day, this list is updated and with the most accurate accurate numbers and licenses. And so this is our second most common open data inquiry, people reaching out to find out why their car might not be on the list. And it's really, and also one of our most highly viewed lists as well would be the, the active FV. Pivoting a little bit to uh, a more research oriented and, and very important list that we maintain are trip records. 
So uh, trip records are handled. Basically, the TLC was is re requires that everyone submit that who is a licensed operator submit their trip records to our agency. So we have a really good understanding of pretty much all of the operations of our licensees throughout the city. This is pretty unique for for a taxi oversight agency to have this type of authority. We're really fortunate to have it. A lot of others are following suit and trying to do this. What we do is we break. If you go on our portal, we have all of this data aggregated, um, but listed by year. But if you go onto the TLC website and look at our data, you can find all of this stuff under our data section parsed out by month. And by and all of our trip records are separated by yellow taxi, SHL, high volume. So those are all of our Uber and Lyft trips. Those are going to be giant data sets because those are making, uh, that industry sector is making over 1 million trips per day. It's quite big data. And then our livery and black car are smaller traditional FHV. And our agency releases all of this data on a six-month schedule. And the reason that we do that is because all of the... All of this data is collected at different times. Our yellow taxis, we really have, and our green taxis, we really have great connection via a third-party provider to all of that data practically in real time. And it's quite rich data, it includes, and so we publish that, all of that rich, rich data on our open data. So if you wanted to do a trip analysis that included things like fare box data and trip distance, those are really have the most fields and what we have the most direct access to. Our FHV data, we have FTPs both with these local smaller companies, and then we also have FTPs with Uber and Lyft. And so all of that data comes in to us on a biweekly basis, but it comes in pretty delayed. And, and especially with our traditional FHVs, a lot of that stuff has to be inputted somewhat manually and checked manually. So that can cause a bit of a delay. So that's why right now we're on a six-month release schedule with our trip records. Okay, and now so going to the application process. So this one is definitely a little bit less. These lists that we maintain are a bit less research focused, but they're also really essential to all of our licensees and people that are really trying to make sure that their license is in, within good standing of the TLC. So this might include drivers that are really trying to locate. Our application process includes the education coursework, drug testing, also ensuring what the status of your application is, so where you are in the application process, also figuring out where you can take our certifying exams. So these are really highly utilized lists by our actual applicants and people that are uh, and stakeholders. A lot of these lists are not automatically updated. They're maintained by various teams with that within TLC. And then finally, uh, a few other, we maintain a lot of lists that are, are also very pertinent to, to industry stakeholders. So in terms of uh, lists that pertain to accessibility, like our you know, payments to medallion owners through our taxi improvement fund, understanding our medallion market really well. We, we main, uh, maintain lists on the sales and transfers. We also maintain really important safety records through Vision Zero. Um, and we do some of our FHV base aggregate reports. So that's where we get a lot of our information about our FHVs and we aggregate that data and, we're, and publish you know, somewhat of an analysis. And now I'm going to pivot over to Nikita. Hey, thank you, Ted. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikita Voivodin. I'm the senior data engineer and current head of the data team here at TLC. I'm going to show you a couple of things today. Ted mostly talked about the data and how we publish it through the open data. I'm going to show you what we do with that data here at TLC. First thing first, I want to say I'm delighted to be here presenting at this conference. It's my first time, hopefully not the last time. At TLC, part of my job is to make the lives of our leadership and analysts a little bit easier when it comes to working uh, with data. And to do that, I try to develop solutions, or you can call them apps or tools that will help working with our huge amounts of data. Uh, I'm going to start this presentation with my conclusion uh, that uh, fancy technology and a lot of effort don't really mean much if underlying data for the solution that you're building is outdated. The two apps that I'm going to show you today are living examples of that. I'm going to show both of them and you'll see the contrast. And by that contrast, I'm going to try to, using that contrast, I'm going to try to make the point that we should always try to update data as frequently uh, as possible. First thing I want to show you is the TLC Data Hub. I'm showing these two apps side by side on the screen. So on the right side, there's a TLC Data Hub. And on the left side, there is this dashboard that I call uh, State of the Industry. Uh, and that dashboard has most of the metrics that the data team generates every month, the Data Hub. Uh, it's an interactive and dynamic app uh, that allows us to play with and analyze uh, TLC trip data. It is split by geographies and uh, industries that we regulate. 
It is a decently sophisticated app, and it was very popular at a time when it was created a couple of years ago. At some point, we had anywhere from two to 300 daily users, which I guess is not too bad for an app like that. So it allows for a lot of cool stuff. I'm not really going to go into detail and not going to play with the app right now, but it is important to know that the app allows us to play with our data. It took a lot of effort to put together. It relies on open data and it was somewhat popular for a couple of months. What happened after those two months? It was decided that the underlying data for that app should only be updated every six months. And that happened for various reasons, mostly security, sensitivity of data, and things like that. The result of that was that data becomes obsolete after two months, and the app itself becomes less effective. And that's the point here. When there's an app that lets you analyze data very close to being live, and it's not updated, uh, frequently, less and less people start using it, and all the effort that you spend developing it goes to waste. The contrast of this comp complicated and sophisticated and very popular in the beginning app is another tool that we recently built. It's called the state of the, state of the industry. So here on the left side, although it is visually appealing because I tried to make it, it is much less sophisticated and took way less effort to put together compared to the TLC data hub. It is a static app, a dashboard that uh, updates itself once a month, but it's not really dynamic. You cannot filter things. You cannot aggregate anything right in front of you. So whatever is basically what you get every month, but it relies on open data and also a combination of some, some of the internal metrics that we have here at TLC. It is distributed internally right now. It goes to our leadership and to our analysts to help them answer quick questions that they get from outside of the agency and also for internal reporting. It stays current, just like I mentioned, because the data gets updated automatically once a month. And we project that compared to, for example, Data Hub in its current version, it will be much more useful because it stays current all the time. So there you have it. You have two tools side by side. Uh, one is very expensive and complicated. It uses but it uses all data and the more outdated that data gets, the less and less people will be using it. And then you have a second one that is simple, quick to put together and is much more effective and extremely useful. And I'm gonna conclude with the same conclusion that I put forward in the beginning. Fancy technology, a lot of effort don't really mean much if underlying data is outdated. So we should always strive to update uh, the data as, as frequently as possible. That will be it on my, on my part. If anybody is interested in a more detailed description of, of these tools, feel free to ask me any questions. I can explain what kind of technology went into building these things, what kind of data fed into these tools, and how you can maybe, how you can maybe access those tools. Thank you. Hold on, I see a question. Yeah, so for the TLC Data Hub on the right side, it was built with our Shiny library. So it's a dynamic app with a back end and front end. So our Shiny provides for both. The one on the left, the state of the industry, as I explained, is a simpler tool. It still uses the same language, R, but the library for it is Flex Dashboard. So it's a fancy version of, of a markdown. It generates an HTML file that you can you know, host anywhere. So our Shiny, for example, you need to buy a server to host. For the Markdown, you can just host it on GitHub, for example, so it's going to be free. wanted to thank you both for presenting this, Nikita and, and Ted. I, I may have missed this, but are you planning to make the state of industry tool public? Or is, is for right now, it's, I know right now it is internal, but is there a future where that might be public facing as well? Potentially, we're probably going to have some internal conversations about it and maybe not a full version of it, but uh, a portion of it can definitely make public because I would say 75% of it uh, relies on open data that we publish anyway. So, for example, the biggest chunk of it, if I can show you right here, industry indicators, this data published on our website and I think also on open data and it 
I would say, a biggest chunk of metrics is displayed in this tab. Some other tabs, maybe we will probably keep private, but things that rely on things that we publish online can definitely be published and use externally as well. Yeah, I think I just would say from the perspective of open data, it's always wonderful to see agencies not only using it for for their own work, but also sharing like how they visualize and interpret it internally, just given the amount of expertise you all have in this data. I guess the other question I would have is, it, I know you were talking about this a little bit, but it sounds like the what you learned from the data hub was explicitly included in developing the state of industry like tool and dashboard. Um, I think it would be the other way around because in terms of technology sophistication, I would say because the data hub is, is more complicated than you know, the state of the industry, it was the other way around. So first was played with markdowns and flex dashboards, static applications. And then at some point we realized that we need something more dynamic. And this is when we start playing with our shiny and sort of dynamic applications, which led to developing TLC data hub but you know it, it's just the state of the industry kind of looks more complicated but in fact it's not it's just maybe the design maybe a little bit more modern or something but yeah but in terms of knowledge of what should be included in that kind of dashboard then definitely you you learn by what people are interested in you see what people are interested in you and then you learn and then you include only things that potentially people only people are going to be interested in 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 something that you develop later and that probably the state of the industry is a, is a result of that all right as we wrap up i can put our contact uh information up on the screen for everybody that's mostly it for us uh, nikita do you have any final thoughts to to share yeah update data more frequently as frequent as you can. And then we're also going to be using it here. And it was great presenting. Hopefully, it's not our last time. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all for having us so much.